Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews and today I'm going to be looking at this, it's the, I better read what it says on the label, it's the Arcbird RTH OSD with GPS and current sensor. It comes in a nice little anti-static bag and look at this, see? Caution, static sensitive devices, which is why I've got my anti-static mat on the workbench at the moment. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look inside and see what you get for your money, which I forget how much it was, but I'll put the price well, I'll put a link to the product in the description on this video so you can go and have a look if you want to buy one. And this is just going to be basically what you get. We haven't actually, we're going to flight test this later on in some of the new FPV airframes that I'm reviewing. And have a look at the various constituent components first. So, this of course does the same sort of thing as the FY21 or 31 that I have I've reviewed the FY products earlier and I like them, they work really well. Now this is a bit cheaper, and uh, there's probably a reason for that. We'll have a look and see why this might be cheaper, and see whether it works as well, or maybe better, because I don't know until we've tested it. Let's get all the little bits and pieces out. They're all packaged separately, but they certainly haven't gone overboard on flash packaging. Oh, there we go. Right, what have we got here? Uh, we've got the main board. Here's the main board, and it's, a, it's actually two boards sandwiched together. And just looking at this, the packaging could be better because I see some of the pins are not too straight, but oh well, never mind. Um, there we go. Now the documentation, no documentation in the package. You've got to go online, download the documentation files. And I see that it comes with a heat shrink here. Uh, so once you've got it together, I guess you just put heat shrink over here and heat it up and shrink it down, which is, to my mind, not as nice as the FY products, which have a lovely brushed aluminium or brushed aluminium case, which protects them from being knocked around and bashed about. And of course also with this, because the circuit boards are exposed, that's why we have the static sensitive warning on the bag, because we don't want to accidentally zap the componentry that's on these boards. So you have to be careful, don't go stuffing this into your foam fuselage before you've got everything connected and the heat shrink on. Otherwise, you could blow up the delicate static sensitive circuitry that's on these boards. That's a little bit of a down, a bit of a minus. Now here's the current sensor. The current sensor has some XT60 connectors on it, and it's pretty much the same as all the other current sensors. Nothing really too flash there, but it comes with a bit of heat shrink. So I don't know why they don't just heat shrink it, because there's nothing you need to put on there that requires having access to the board. It's all just plug and play. It's got the XT60s and it's got a, a lead, which obviously is to connect up to the main system. And then we've got the GPS. It's a, quite a large patch, but it's quite, it's a very thin GPS. And I see it even has an onboard battery to keep the almanac, which is like a list of where the satellites are. So it should take much less time to find the satellites when you turn it on after the first time when it updates its almanac. That's quite a good feature. And uh, it also means if you accidentally lose GPS hold during a flight, you'll get it back more quickly, which is important too. Now, little wire harnesses here, uh, rainbow cables. This is obviously for the receiver to the actual board, the servo connectors on each end, and then some miscellaneous connectors here. We think we've got one for the temperature sensor somewhere, and another one for the G GPS, and this is a, probably a power lead that goes off to, I don't know what it does, but we'll look at the instructions and see how that works. So basically, here's your bits and pieces. It's, um, it's pretty straightforward. It's actually not that complex. This, of course, has the on-screen display, which I'll show you in a later video how that looks and the different options that are available in the on-screen display. It has gyros to give you stability, supposedly, so you can turn it into a stable mode and it will make sure your aircraft remains straight and level. It has return to launch, so if something goes wrong and you lose the radio signal or if you're just too lazy to fly back, you can flick a switch or the failsafe will kick in and it will fly back to where you launched it from, which I think is a wonderful safety feature for any FPV craft if you tend to fly at any distance, certainly if you're going beyond visual line of sight, you should have return to launch. And I'll be showing you in a later video, one of my safety videos, how to set these things up and why it's important not just to assume that return to launch will always save your bacon, because there are some issues with return to launch. You've got to plan ahead. Planning is a critical factor to the safe use of return to launch and to any long distance FPV flight actually. But that's it. That's what you get in the bag. And stay tuned because we'll have some uh, comprehensive testing of this. I'll be installing it in, I'll probably install it in the Penguin FPV model, and I'll show you the whole process. We'll set it up, make sure it works, then we'll do some test flying. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next part of the FPV series on RC Model Reviews.